Welcome to the OnlyFans Secrets Marketing Podcast. The goal of this podcast is to help both new and established OnlyFans creators learn the basics of online branding, marketing, and promotion to help you make more money with your content and maximize your time online. My name is Richard Lewis, and I have over 20 years of internet marketing experience. So let's get started with today's topic. And that topic is following OnlyFans' new anti-spam rules. In the last episode, we touched on OnlyFans' crackdown of follow for follow. Uh, This is a broader push by OnlyFans to crack down on creator-generated promotional spam. In this episode, we'll break down all the measures being taken and how to make sure you follow all the new rules to stay out of trouble on the site. Okay, so what is spam? All right, so spam is the term for unwanted online messages or unsolicited messages that come in bulk. It was coined in the 1990s and comes from the Monty Python spam sketch that was created in the 1970s. So you can imagine people in the 1990s, the 80s, those people who created the modern internet, they were nerds, which is awesome. Uh, because I personally have performed many Monty Python sketches live in front of audiences. So I'm very familiar with Monty Python. And the concept of this uh, sketch was is that two patrons run a restaurant and they asked what was on the menu. And at each point, spam would be added more and more into the menu item. So for instance, the uh, woman says, you know, that we have egg, sausage, and spam. And we have spam, egg, sausage, and spam. And we have spam, bacon, sausage, spam. And then to the point of eventually where she's just saying, we have spam, 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 spam. And then the uh, customer says, but I don't like spam. And then everyone starts singing spam, it's lovely spam, etc. And this is where this comes from. Uh, so someone who does not want spam, but it seems to be just shoved into every menu item until the point at which the only thing is, there is the spam. So when the internet first came about, email was the main thing that people used to communicate with each other. And quickly, people who were spammers uh, figured out that they could just send bulk messages through email programs to the point at which uh, email started to become less attractive for people because much like when you would open your mail uh, in the early 90s, you would find nothing but junk mail in your postal mail to the point where it was hard to find anything in there. So each time people have to crack down on the method of messaging so that there's more of the good stuff and less of things people don't want, which is promotional material. So what's happening is the same thing with OnlyFans, in that they uh, underestimated people's ability to utilize their system to promote themselves and promote others. So you can imagine that one creator with a huge audience can now just inundate, uh, you know, subscribers with nothing but promotional messages. And they might have, you know, subscribed to something for free uh, two months ago. And at that time, it was actually a legitimate, you know, page. And then it just became a page of promotion. And they don't, you know, or maybe they have had this four or five of these and so when they open up their OnlyFans, all they're seeing is all of this promotion to the point of which it becomes less and less attractive to use OnlyFans. The same way that email was becoming less and less attractive until spam filters were created. And, you know, for major programs, they decided, okay, we're going to do spam filtering. And that took out the spam, you know, anything that wasn't a legitimate message. Uh, it's harder for something like OnlyFans to have that kind of uh, system put into place. It's easier for them to just say, hey, let's limit 
the amount of promotion. And it's possible that they are working on something that will catch the spam, catch promotion. But at the moment, the easiest solution is just to limit what creators can do. All right, so why would simply promoting your OnlyFans be considered spam? Okay, so t- this is because there are just certain users that are abusing the system. So for most people listening to the podcast, you are going to be fine. You don't go crazy with your promotion through the system. You're not trying to manipulate it. You're not trying to reach audiences that are way outside of, you know, your domain of who should you should even be, you know, messaging, all of that kind of stuff. So what happens is is that, you know, the good people always have to kind of suffer for what bad people do. Um, so, you know, at this point now, you feel suspect because you're being told you're limited with what you can do uh, without having ever done anything wrong to begin with. And if, you know, someone's listening right now who's just joining OnlyFans, you're, you're already, you know, suspect. <laughs> and so you're limited in your abilities now to promote. So, so uh, next, what are the full rules as of now on OnlyFans and what has changed? So as we went over in our last episode about share for shares, you know, sharing uh, other people's links on your page uh, through posts is now, you know, limited to three per 24 hours. So you're able to, you know, post three messages, three promotions for other people. Now, again, for most people, that's going to be more than enough. Um, you know, the number of people that you know that are also creators uh, that you might want to do a shout out for, that's probably going to be great. So what they're trying to do there is just make sure that if there's people who are trying to do, you know, 30, 100 different creators in one day out to, you know, their their mass uh, audience that they got possibly through free subscriptions, free follows, um, that it's now limited for them. All right, so next we have free trial links. Now, free trial links have unlimited use. Uh, but now can only be posted uh, with the three, uh, or I'm sorry, can only be posted on OF 30 times per day. Now, again, 30 times, <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, you know, very few people are going to reach past that limit uh, where you, and if you do, uh, you're having a great, great week and a great day. Um, and you can always, you know, post these, you know, these things to somewhere else. You can always post it to, you know, at your Twitter and say, okay, go check over there. I've posted the free link there uh, for them to find or find some way if you've really gone beyond 30. But again, it's unlikely with regular use that you are going to encounter uh, these kind of programs or problems. And I will say this. I'm not familiar if there are any software programs that are, you know, basically hacking OnlyFans. Um, that's very co- common too. Once something becomes popular, someone will come up with a software program to do, you know, automated mass mailings out to, you know, people. And it's entirely possible that that kind of program exists out there right now, or someone has created it. And that was overwhelming their system. So even if you're just talking about like the manual people who are running promotions manually for maybe 100 creators and getting paid for it, there's probably some people out there who have figured out some sort of manual software way of doing it. And they were just pumping out uh, messages, posts at breakneck speed with free trials, you know, and you know, links that were just going to anyone who possibly was, you know, on OnlyFans. Again, it it's not something that most of us concern ourselves with, but whenever something becomes popular, there's always somebody out there who will create a software program. Uh, I'm definitely dating myself here, but uh, when MySpace was very popular before Facebook uh, and I was doing promotion on um, MySpace, There was a program that allowed you, I think it was called Friend Finder, and it would allow you not only to add as many people as you could 
on MySpace, but then uh, message them after you have. And I tell you, it was a, it was wonderful. Uh, there was nothing against you know legal about that, and it was just a really easy way to gain as many you know followers as possible. Um, you know, but I'm sure it uh, was a problem for their system. Uh, and they never outlawed it. They stopped being popular, I guess, at the point at which they would have needed to do that. But there's always um, somebody out there who's creating those sort of systems. So if it doesn't exist already, this cor- this sort of system is telling people, don't bother, because we're going to crack down on it. Okay, and then next you have mass DMs. You know, keep in mind that you now can be reported for spamming in them. So if you've been doing what are called, you know, DM drops, mass DM drops to lots and lots of different people, you know, with a link, with, you know, something about your, you know, paywall content, again, just be careful with what you're doing. Um, For most, almost all social channels, it's a risk to do anything automated uh, because they can pick up on the fact that it's automated. Uh, for most of the Twitter promotion that I do, I do everything manually. Um, you know, it's just never worth it to get, you know, dinged uh, because they're seeing you do every, you know, something automated. Um, and you don't learn a lot through automation either. I'll say you don't learn anything about your fans. You don't learn anything about their wants and needs. If you're just mass sending out things, you don't even know who you are. They're all just nameless. So there's a large marketing advantage to actually doing things manually, sending your DMs out one at a time. Obviously more time consuming, uh, no doubt there. Uh, But, you know, since they are looking now at things like this, it's best to go ahead and you know be aware of that and maybe switch some of your marketing techniques if they have been more driven towards you know mass appeal towards individual appeal. Okay, so what else has changed? All right, so there's also now a new option for users. And this option allows them from the their home page to hide all locked posts, and to hide all promotional posts. So as I have gone over in previous podcasts, my love for the free page and using your free page to promote yourself, especially in the beginning when you don't have a lot of following, it's really helpful. For a lot of people, the type that they use there with the free page is free page, and locked paywall posts so that, you know, if someone does decide they want to give you their money, you have an option there um, by putting content behind the paywall. So they have now added this hide locked posts and hide promotional posts. So if someone was to choose that uh, option, they go to your free page and they might not necessarily know you have locked posts at all. Uh, I'm sure there's some workarounds there. Um, I'm sure people will start, you know, especially, you know, if they think that most people aren't even seeing their locked posts saying, unlock your locked posts because, you know, I'm the only way you're going to see the good stuff is if you do that. That's how I'd advise for now. Um, Letting people know, like if you currently have this free page, letting people know there's locked posts, you just might, might not be seeing them, you know, so alerting people, you know, to, to take that off. It's not automatically uh, triggered, so someone would have to find it, and I'll be honest with you, it's not super easy to find. It's to the right all underneath where, you know, you're selecting all messages. It's all the way to the right with some lines, and then you open that up, and it says this. So, You'd really have to kind of hunt for it, which is a good thing, Um, but, you know, for now. Now, also, it states in there, hide all promotional posts. Um, So, again, people might open that up and just select hide all promotional posts so they don't have to see uh, promotional posts anymore. So, not only uh, could it be not effective, you know, from a 